The more studying and practice, the better. Am I right? You can follow along with me as I read through these practice questions. Are you ready? Question number one. While inspecting an elderly female patient, you note that she has an abnormal anteroposterior curvature of the spine. This best describes which of the following? A. Kyphosis. B. Scoliosis. C. Kyphoscoliosis. D. Pectus excavatum. The correct answer is A. Kyphosis. An abnormal AP curvature of the spine is called kyphosis. Other common deformities are 1. Pectus carinatum, which is an abnormal anterior protrusion of the sternum. 2. Pectus excavatum, which is a depression of part or all of the sternum. 3. Scoliosis, which is an abnormal lateral curvature of the spine. And 4. Kyphoscoliosis, which is a combination of kyphosis and scoliosis, which may produce a severe restrictive lung defect. Question number two. While auscultating a patient's chest, you hear intermittent bubbling sounds at the lung bases. Which of the following best describes this finding? A. Bronchial sounds heard at lung bases. B. Wheezes heard at lung bases. C. Ronchi heard at lung bases. D. Crackles heard at lung bases. The correct answer is D. Crackles heard at lung bases. The preferred term for short, discontinuous, adventitious lung sounds that are crackling or bubbling in nature is crackles. Many clinicians still use the term rails for these sounds. Crackles are caused either by movement of excessive secretions in the airways or by collapsed airways opening during inspiration. Question number three. While feeling of a patient's radial pulse, you note that the pulse feels bounding and full. Which of the following conditions would likely be the cause of this finding? A. Hypovolemia. B. Hypertension. C. Cardiovascular shock. D. Low cardiac output. The correct answer is B. Hypertension. A bounding pulse is characterized by forceful pulsations that quickly disappear, indicating a high systolic pressure without a rise in diastolic pressure. A bounding pulse is normal during exercise or as a result of a fight or flight release of epinephrine. A bounding pulse also can signal an abnormal condition, most commonly hypertension, due to atherosclerosis or disorders causing increased stroke volume. Hypovolemia, shock, and low cardiac output usually result in decreased systolic and pulse pressures. Question number four. A patient is cachexic, exhibits generalized edema and dry skin, and appears to be lacking energy. The most likely problem in this scenario is A. Heart failure B. Addison's disease C. Renal failure D. Malnutrition The correct answer is D. Malnutrition Cachexia, or a weak or emaciated appearance, generalized edema, cracked lips, dry, scaly skin, and listlessness are all physical signs associated with severe malnutrition. Question number five. Before giving an aerosol treatment, you see a note in the chart that states your patient had pink, frothy secretions on admission to the emergency department. This most likely indicates which of the following? A. Core pulmonail. B. Left ventricular failure. C. An electrolyte imbalance. D. ARDS. The correct answer is B. Left ventricular failure. Frothy pink-tinged secretions are a hallmark sign of cardiogenic pulmonary edema, 
which is the result of left ventricular failure, or CHF. Question number six. After feeling chest pain and shortness of breath, a 38-year-old female drove herself to the emergency room. After starting oxygen therapy on the patient, the respiratory therapist performed a physical exam and noted the following. A hyper-resonant percussion note on the right side and a tracheal shift to the left. What is most likely the cause of these findings? A. Broken ribs on the right side. B. Right-sided pneumothorax. C. Broken clavicle on the right side. D. Acute myocardial infarction. The correct answer is B. Right-sided pneumothorax. The patient's signs and symptoms best fit those of a right-sided pneumothorax. Although it is possible for a patient to have a broken bone, this would not produce shortness of breath, a hyper-resonant percussion note on the right side, and a tracheal shift to the left side. An acute myocardial infarction could cause sudden chest pain and shortness of breath, but would not cause a hyper-resonant percussion note or tracheal shift. Question number seven. You have a patient who walks slower than people of the same age because of breathlessness. How would you characterize their degree of dyspnea? A. Slight. B. Moderate. C. Severe. D. Very severe. The correct answer is B. Moderate. You can assess a patient's exercise tolerance via interview using the American Thoracic Society Breathlessness Scale. By inquiring as to when breathlessness is first noticed by the patient, you can assign a rating to the symptom, with a descriptive term for each level. In this case, a patient who walks slower than people of the same age on level ground because of breathlessness, or has to stop for breath when walking at own pace on level ground, would be characterized as having moderate dyspnea. Question number eight. After assessing an acutely dyspneic and hypotensive patient, you note the following, all on the left side of the chest. Reduced chest expansion. Hyperresonance to percussion. Absence of breath sounds and tactile phrenitis. And a tracheal shift to the right. These findings most likely suggest A. Left-sided pneumothorax B. Left-sided consolidation C. Left lobar obstruction, atelectasis D. Left-sided pleural effusion The correct answer is A. Left-sided pneumothorax An acutely ill patient with dyspnea, hypotension, unilateral findings of reduced chest expansion, a hyper-resonant percussion note, absent of breath sounds and tactile phrenitis, and a tracheal shift to the right, has most likely suffered a large pneumothorax on the affected side. If the pneumothorax is severe enough to disrupt cardiac function, blood pressure will also fall. Question number nine. While assessing a patient, you notice that her responses to your questions are unclear. Which of the following would be your most appropriate response? A. Please go on. B. You seem to be anxious. C. I see why you are so upset. D. Please explain that to me again. The correct answer is D. Please explain that to me again. When a patient's response to a question is initially vague, one should seek clarification from the patient. Examples of clarification methods include questions, such as, I don't understand what you have just said. Please explain that to me again. Question number 10. You've asked your patient to inhale as deeply as possible and blow out all of the air as hard as they can, until empty. Which test is being performed? A. FVC B. IC C. TLC D. MVV The correct answer is A. FVC 
When a patient performs a maximal exhalation after a maximal inhalation, he is performing the forced vital capacity maneuver. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed these practice questions. These detailed questions come directly from our full book of practice questions. It contains over 1,000 practice questions, just like these, that are in the exact format like the ones you'll see on the TMC exam. Going through these practice questions is an excellent way to prepare your board exam and test your knowledge. Thank you so much for listening to this cheat sheet. I know you're going to do incredibly well when you take TMC exam yourself. Keep working hard and studying harder. You're almost to the finish line, and all your hard work will soon pay off in a big way. I wish you the best of luck on this journey, and as always, breathe easy, my friend.